Hello everybody, happy Monday. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. You know what time it is. It's time for us to talk about some true crime. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a parent that failed to do his job. Now, parents are supposed to protect us from harm, but what happens when that parent that should protect us is the one harming us? We're going to go all the way to Austria for this one, so let's buckle up and jump right into it. On August 28th, 1984, the 18 year old Elizabeth Fritzel disappeared. He vanished. But we wouldn't know what happened to Elizabeth until 24 years later. Elizabeth lived with her parents, Yosef and Rosemary Fritzel. Now, I think it's probably the language barrier or something. Some person said Joseph and some person said Yosef. So if I do call him Joseph or Yosef in this video, just know that it's the same person, all right? Yosef married Rosemary when he was 21 and she was 17. They had seven children, five girls and two boys. Elizabeth was the fourth child. Elizabeth's home life was not the best and it wasn't because she had this huge family, but it said that Yosef started to abuse Elizabeth when she was just 11 years old. Now, we don't know if he did this to any other of his daughters. Again, he had five of them. Or if he started this when she was younger or maybe older. But based on my research, most of the persons were saying he started to abuse her when she was 11. When Elizabeth was 16 years old, she graduated high school and she started a course so she could become a waitress. In January of 1983, Elizabeth ran away with a friend that she met through this waitressing course, but three weeks after, the authorities found her and brought her back home because her parents reported her as missing. She had no other choice than to return to her abusive household and to finish her waitressing course. In mid-1984, Elizabeth finally completed her waitressing course and she was offered a job. She was very excited about it. She was going to start making money and then she could eventually move out. But unfortunately, this opportunity was taken from Elizabeth. Yosef lured his daughter into the basement saying that he needed help carrying down a door. She held the door in place while he was fitting the door into the basement. She did not know that this door that she was holding in place was the final piece that he needed to complete his basement prison. After the door was fitted, Elizabeth was taken by surprise and an ether soaked towel was placed over her face until she was unconscious. He stepped outside, locked the door, went back upstairs and resumed life like normal. At the end of the day, Rosemary realized that Elizabeth was not home and Elizabeth was responsible so this was kind of out of the norm for her. So Rosemary immediately went to the police to file a missing persons report but the police kind of just thought that it was a runaway because remember Elizabeth did run away once before. A month later, Yosef turned up saying that he received a letter from Elizabeth saying that she's staying with a friend. She has decided to run away. She doesn't want any contact with her family and she does not want them to contact her either because she will leave the country. Yosef also told the police that he thought his daughter might have joined a religious cult and due to the fact that Elizabeth already ran away once before, this was very plausible. They didn't completely close the case, but it was dying down. Now, Elizabeth did indeed write that letter because Yosef, 
forced her to do that. And this would have been the first of many letters that Yosef would force his daughter to write. It took eight doors before you got to the door that opened Elizabeth's prison. Down there was cramped and dark and the tallest area was six feet high. Yosef would go down there to drop off food and supplies. He would visit her almost every day. Sometimes that would cut down to three times a week and he would even spend the night down there. He worked down in the basement anyways, so his frequent trips to the basement didn't raise any alarms. So for the first four years, Elizabeth was down there alone until 1988 when she gave birth to a healthy baby girl that she named Kirsten. This wasn't her first pregnancy. She got pregnant before, but at 10 weeks, she had a miscarriage. And she had to go through all of this alone by herself down there in the basement. A few years later, she gave birth to a son and she named him Stefan. Not only was Elizabeth a prisoner, but now she had children in the basement that were prisoners too. Now, Elizabeth tried her best to give them as much as a normal life as possible. I mean, how much of a normal life can you give these kids? She taught them how to play games and she taught them like basic math and English. And over the years, Elizabeth went on to have five more children for her father. And unfortunately, one of these children died because he was having some breathing issues. Elizabeth asked to take the baby to the hospital. He refused and a few days later, the baby died. Strangely enough, I see a whole lot of reports talking about the baby that died. But nobody talks about what he did to the body. Like, I'm genuinely curious as to what Yosef did with this dead baby's body. Hmm. Moving on. With Elizabeth giving birth to all of these children, clearly space became an issue because Yosef built this prison containment system whatever for just one person which was elizabeth he wasn't thinking long term i guess i don't know so what this man decided to do right was move some of the children move them where you might ask upstairs to live with him yosef came up with this elaborate scheme right he was going to leave whichever baby he chose to come upstairs at different sections of the house so that Rosemary could find them. And when Rosemary found these babies, they would have a note on them saying, this is Elizabeth, I was traveling, I got pregnant, I can no longer take care of this child, can you take care of this child for me, blah, blah, blah. Now, in Rosemary's eyes, she saw this as her daughter reaching out for help, her daughter that she hasn't seen in years. So she wanted to be there for her child and, and she took these children in, no questions asked. Rosemary did the smart thing, well I don't know if it's a smart thing, but Rosemary did bring the children to social services and explained the whole situation and applied to adopt these children because they were her grandchildren anyways. Social services approved of these kids living with them. They did not reach out to find Elizabeth or anything. They just saw the letters, got the explanation and just said, okay, fine, you know, let these children live with you, which is very strange, very unprofessional, it was very, very weird. They would also receive a frequent visit from social workers just to check up on the kids to ensure that the kids are good. And they never saw anything suspicious. Anyways, so over the years, Yosef did this with three different children and Rosemary just accepted them all and did what she had to do. So Elizabeth is downstairs with two children, 
one child had died and three of her children were upstairs living with her abuser and then Elizabeth had her seventh child. Now the only reason why Yosef didn't take the seventh child upstairs is simply because Rosemary was getting old and she could not manage to take care of a fourth child. Space down there was still small so Yosef approved of an enlargement of the prison and for the next three years Elizabeth and her children had to do this themselves with their bare hands. The prisoners had a TV, a radio, a video cassette player. They also had a refrigerator and they had hot plates. Sometimes Yosef would shut off the light and they would be in complete darkness and he would refuse to deliver food for days to Elizabeth and her children. He threatened that if they tried to escape, he would gas them and if they meddled with the door, it would electrocute them and they would die. So he was ruling them with fear. In April 2008, Kirsten, who was the eldest daughter, that first baby girl, she was 19 and she was really sick. She had been sick for a while and it didn't seem as if she was recovering anytime soon. Elizabeth begged Yosef to take Kirsten to the hospital because she was getting worse and Elizabeth did not want her daughter to die down there. At first, Yosef was reluctant, obviously, he didn't want his cover to be blown or anything, but then Kirsten fell unconscious, so it was either he was going to let her die or he was going to take her to the hospital. He forced Elizabeth to write a note explaining what was wrong with her and everything, and then he asked Elizabeth to help him bring Kirsten upstairs and for the first time in 24 years she felt sun on her skin and then she was immediately forced back down into the dark basement. He put the note on Kirsten and called the ambulance. When Kirsten was taken to the hospital she was admitted in critical condition because she had a life threatening kidney failure. She was really pale, she was white as snow, and she was very thin. So not only were they treating her for the kidney failure, they're looking at her strange because it's obvious that this girl has been abused. When Kirsten was conscious enough to speak and everything, she spent the next week speaking to police. But Kirsten didn't reveal anything about her living conditions or who her parents were or anything. Which is understandable because Yosef had always given her a strict set of rules. And again, she was living in fear of this man. The police found this very suspicious and they found this very strange because nobody knows who this girl is or where she's from or anything. There's no record of her birth. Clearly, she was birthed in a basement. The only thing that they know about Kirsten is that she's connected to Yosef because he's the one that called the ambulance. Right then and there, Yosef is looking suspicious because the letters from Elizabeth would always pop up at the most convenient times. Not only that, when the babies pop up, there would always be a note. There wouldn't be a phone call or anything. And then this pale, paper thin girl comes into hospital and another note is presented and she's connected to you. So what's up, Yosef? They decided, you know what? It's not gonna hurt to just reopen Elizabeth's missing persons case. In the meantime, Elizabeth is putting some pressure on Yosef because she does have a TV and she's seeing what's happening, that they're trying to identify this girl, they're searching for her parents, they're searching for her mom or whatever. So Elizabeth is telling Yosef that, hey, just let me go to the hospital and claim Kirsten and just bring her back home. I don't have to tell the police anything about what's been happening here for the past 24 years nothing. I literally just want my child back. 
after a whole lot of convincing Yosef finally decided to let Elizabeth out. Some reports say that he let her out and her two children that were down in the basement. Some reports say that she was the only person that was let out. Either way, on April 26, 2018, Elizabeth turned up at the hospital to collect Kirsten. But there was something obviously wrong. She was pale and she was really, really thin. So the doctors said that this was suspicious and called the authorities right away and Elizabeth was then taken into custody. At first, when she was being interviewed, she was looked at as the person that abused Kirsten. They were asking her, why does Kirsten look like this? Why is she so thin? Why is she so pale? But looking at Elizabeth, you can see that she herself is in the same situation that Kirsten is in. So the police questioned her about Yosef and she said that she will tell them everything as long as they promise that she would never see her father ever again. And they made that promise. Elizabeth then told the authorities about everything that she went through in the past 24 years and everyone was shocked. She spoke about the abuse, the children, she spoke about the rape. She said that she was forced to watch pornographic videos and then made to reenact them in front of the children. So all the time, whatever was happening downstairs, it was happening in front of these kids. So not only was she messed up, but these kids must have been messed up seeing this take place. Anyways, Joseph, who was 73, at this point in time he got arrested and his wife rosemary fled the scene when this happened so they had to go out and look for her when she was found she was very distraught she was very emotional and she said that she did not know about anything that was taking place she did not know that for all these years 24 years her daughter was literally feet away from her. So there were tenants that were even living there over the years. And when these tenants were interviewed, they didn't know that anybody was in the basement either. Like some of them said they would hear some strange sounds sometimes. But when they asked Yosef about it, he would just explain it away. And they would be like, oh, okay, no problem. And just leave it alone. Like nobody knew that this young girl no woman was in the basement all this time this man stole 24 years from his daughter she was 42 years old when she made it out of that basement on april 29th dna evidence confirmed that yosef was the biological father of Elizabeth's children but Yosef's defense lawyer said that this proved incest but it does not prove rape and it does not prove imprisonment imprisonment enslavement either or nobody truly knows how long Yosef was planning to keep Elizabeth down in that basement that's the scary part but a letter that she was forced to write the year before suggested that he was planning to let them out soon because in the letter she wrote she will be coming home soon enough but she just can't do that as yet on march 19th 2009 after a four-day trial and three weeks before Yosef's 74th birthday, he pled guilty to the charges of murder by negligence for his infant son that died days after birth. Infant son slash grandson. Whoa, that's confusing. As well as decades of enslavement, incest, rape, coercion, and false imprisonment of his daughter. He was sentenced to life, which makes no sense to me because he was 74 years old. Y'all should have just given him the death penalty. That man doesn't deserve to live. 
Yosef also had a criminal history. So let's talk about that for a quick second now, shall we? When Yosef was about 31 years old and married to Rosemary for about 10 years, he broke into the home of a 21 year old nurse. He raped her, he held a knife to her throat and threatened to slit it if she screamed. He also was named as a suspect in the attempted rape of a 21 year old woman. He was arrested and he spent 12 months of an 18 month sentence. But after 15 years, his criminal record was expunged. So when he went with his wife to apply to be a foster parent for his grandchildren slash children, they would not have found a record of his crimes because it had been well over 15 years that he committed it. In a psychiatric assessment, Yosef claimed that he decided to imprison his daughter because she did not adhere to the rules when she was a teenager and he kind of wanted to create a safe space for her, even if that meant taking her against her will. I think his perception of the relationship between himself and his daughter is completely warped in his mind because when he was talking about it, he was like, oh, it was consensual and I brought her flowers down in the bunker and I brought the kids books and I brought them toys. But the thing is, he knew that it was wrong and that's why he hid the children down there and that's why he had to sneak the children that he decided to keep upstairs. Anyways, the last picture that we have of Elizabeth was from before she was taken and the reason why no other pictures were released or whatever is because they wanted to protect her identity. Now she is living somewhere, I think they named it but I didn't write it down. And on her property, there's bodyguards and there's CCTVs everywhere and she's there with her children. She's also in a relationship with one of her bodyguards the last time I saw the update, which was in 2019. The bodyguard is 23 years her junior. That means that he's 23 years younger than her. And as it relates to her mother, she fell out with her mother, rightfully so, but now they have some form of relationship and her mother is also very close with the children that she helped to raise, which is the three grandchildren. The last update I saw on Yosef was in 2019. It stated that his health is rapidly declining. However, I'm not seeing any article saying that this man is dead, okay? That's all I have for you guys on this crazy, crazy, crazy case. But it is time for my thoughts. First and foremostly, I'm not even going to call Yosef mentally ill because that is an offense to mentally ill people. How does a father think about this whole elaborate scheme? When you think about it, you know, this man got all out. This man literally made this prison for his daughter. He lured her down there and he kept her for 24 years. And who knows how much longer he would have kept her down there. And the most morbid thing that I think about, what if he just dropped down dead one day? What would have happened to Elizabeth and her three children? They would have starved to death. And starvation... That is not an easy death. It's not just you getting hungry and dying and that's it. No, you suffer. Your stomach starts to eat itself essentially and you're just there lying in pain wishing to be put out of your misery. I'm just thinking how horrific that would have been and nobody would have known. But I'm glad the story ended the way it ended. You understand? But that man... He shouldn't have gotten life in prison. He should have gotten death. And I hope right now that that man isn't breathing. Like, I'm, I'm shaking thinking about it. Anyways, moving on from that. Rosemary, she's a fucking idiot. And I think that she must have known something. And she was being willfully freaking ignorant. Because I refuse to believe that 
these letters are popping up and these children are popping up and you just sit down and take it so you don't you don't know where your daughter is you don't know where these kids come from nothing no investigation nothing are you that done then again right this man committed a crime raped a woman while he was still with rosemary this man went to prison and this woman sat down and waited on this man and they were still together so am i surprised no but i do believe that she knew something i refuse to believe that this woman definitely never knew nothing she was that oblivious she never knew what that one done in the basement finally elizabeth and the children i'm just really glad that they're okay and i hope that there's no jealousy between the kids because three children were taken upstairs and three children were left down in the basement and i can understand how that could cause some tension because why were you chosen why was i left down in this basement to suffer to starve while you were living a normal ass life upstairs you know what i'm saying i wish that all the children were upstairs and never had to go through that i wish elizabeth never had to go through that but as you can see you know she's living her life now or the best that she can make of it she's dating someone 23 years her junior and i think that she's doing that because it makes her feel normal and it makes her feel somewhat young everything was stolen from her at a certain age and i think mentally she's probably still at that age maybe a year older maybe she's at around 20 mentally so that's why she chose to date someone younger so she can feel the way that she feels inside if that makes any sense anyways that's all i have for you guys today thank you so much for watching as per usual the links to my sources will be down below in my description if you guys want to go and read up on this stuff for yourself my social media handles are also down there y'all can always send me suggestions or anything i love that leave your opinions in the comments i love to hear them i know this case has been crazy this is probably going to be one of my longer videos as per usual remember to be a beautiful soul not just a gorgeous face and i will see you next time Bye. Yosef then forced Olivia. Yosef forced. Blah, blah, blah.